Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing the goodness of God, and last time we concluded that there can't ever be an infinite amount of anything. This time, whether God is present in everything. Now, in a certain sense, God is clearly not present in everything. When we say that a person is in a room, we mean that their body is physically present in spatial boundaries of that room. God isn't a body, however, so he can't be present in that sense, except through the body of Jesus. See the episodes on the Eucharist for examples of this. So, when we speak of God being present, we usually mean something other than his physical presence. What's usually meant is that God is present in the same sense that a sculptor is present to the marble as he sculpts it. A cook can be at work without actually being at the stove he works at. In the same sense, God can be at a point in space and time because he interacts with it, even if he's not physically present to that point. This is what we usually mean when we talk about the presence of God. Some people think that God is above things, as it says in Psalm 112, and therefore isn't in them. However, when Psalm 112 mentions God being above other things, what it means is that God is far more excellent than anything else, not that he isn't causing things to happen in them. It's been suggested that it's not so much that God is in everything as that everything is in God. God, after all, isn't completely contained by any point in space, but it's impossible for any point in space to be partly outside of God's influence. In a certain sense, that's true. Everything is in God, in a way. But that doesn't mean that God isn't in any location. After all, chairness, or the quality of being a chair, isn't completely contained by any specific chair, yet we still say that chairs have the quality of being chairs. In the same way, God, who is non-physical, can also be in certain places without needing to be completely contained by them. You might think that God, being the most powerful, is able to cause effects from a greater distance away and therefore doesn't need to be present in order to cause those effects. But no matter how powerful you are, the only way to cause effects from a distance is with some tool or intermediary of some kind. For example, I can get in contact with my friend from a huge distance away by using a tool called a phone. However, because of God's great power, he doesn't need to act through tools or intermediaries. He can act directly on anything through his power. Therefore, he's present to everything. Then there are the demons. Surely God isn't in them too, right? Well, again, the demons have existence, and they didn't get that from nowhere. It's just about the only good thing they have, but they still have it. So God is also present in the demons, in the sense that he supports their continued existence, but certainly not in the sense of supporting their evil doing or sinfulness. So, in conclusion, it does make sense to say that God is present in everything, if you mean that his creative influence is immediately present to everything, rather than implying his physical presence. Next time, is God everywhere? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.